Now this time we once again have to solve a trigonometric equation where we see that our uh, trig ratios are different from each other. We see that the inputs are also different and uh, that we don't have a single trig ratio equal to a constant. However, that is our aim, is to get to this point where we have our trig ratio equal to a constant. Okay. But before we can get there, we are going to first have to make all our angles positive, acute, and simple. And secondly, change everything into cos and sine if necessary. So let's see. If I look at this, um, I notice that this is definitely, can use the co-ratios. Okay, not co-ratios, um, the reduction formula. And we have here uh, 90 degrees or negative 270, plus or minus 180 negative uh, 2, negative 90 or 270 okay and this is what we are using called our cost diagram in order to simplify this thing okay so first we notice that uh, for cos 270 plus t that is in the fourth quadrant hopefully by now you know why okay we see that that is made with the y-axis okay in the fourth quadrant cos is positive however I don't want an angle made with the y-axis I want it with the x-axis and therefore I have to use co-ratios so in other words this becomes 3 sine t okay it stays positive because cos the original function is positive in that quadrant okay plus the square root of 27 okay um, here, uh, they didn't say I'm not allowed to use a calculator, but it should actually. But here I'm going to change square root of 27 into the square root of 3, uh, or let's make it the square root of 9, times the square root of 3. Okay, and then we have the square root of 48 is the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. I am, the square root of 9 is known as well as the square root of 16, and that's why. Okay, so let's see the next one um, is negative sine of a negative 180 degrees plus t. Okay, negative 180 degrees is um, there plus means it's this way. This is the fourth quadrant. In other words, we're in this quadrant. We're made with the x-axis because 180 plus. Okay, so this is in the third quadrant where sine is negative. Now, don't think that this means sine is already negative. No, this is just a negative 1 that comes in, that's multiplying the sine. And negative 1 must now be multiplied again. So now we actually have positive 1. Positive sine of a hundred, negative 180 plus t. Okay. And uh, now we simplify. We see we've got three signs on this side, one sign on that side. So that if I subtract a sign, t on both sides, I find that on the left hand side, um, I have two left. Two sine t's left. Okay, on the right hand side, uh, the square root of 16 is 4. So I've got four square roots of 3. And on this side, I've got three square roots of three. So if I subtract the three that I have on this side from that side, I have one left. Okay, so I've got a square root of three left. And then I simplify to get my single trig ratio equal to a constant. Sine t is the square root of three over two. Okay, now this, once I get to that point, the next step is to find my reference angle. Once I have my reference angle, I simply write out my general solution. And then I find my specific solutions, which is, this step is now extra. We've not done this before for this type of question, where we have an interval and I have to solve this equation for that interval. So I don't just get my general solution, I go further. So I find my reference angle for this. This is a special angle where sine is y over r. So I've got square root 3 over 2, which means this one is 1. This is for the special triangle 60 degrees. Okay. Now with that, I've got my reference angle is 60 degrees. It is positive, so the reference angle is going to stay positive. Now my two general solutions. For sine, it is the uh, general solutions where sine is positive. That's first quadrant, so reference angle plus 360 degrees times k. Um, in other words, t, that's what t is equal to. So in other words, t is equal to 60 degrees plus 360 degrees times k. 
Okay, the other general solution is um, where I have 180 minus my reference angle. Okay, minus my reference angle because this is the quadrant 180 minus that part where sine is positive. So 180 minus my reference angle plus 360 times k gives me 180 minus 60 gives me 120 degrees plus 360 degrees times k. Okay, with this, these two formulas, I know that k is an integer. Okay, k is just some uh, the number of periods that I am adding. Okay, first of all, I am going to make k equal to 0, 1, 2, until I fall outside of my upper limit. And then I'm going to go negative until I fall outside of my lower limit. So starting with 0, I see I find 60, so my limit is negative 135, smaller than t, smaller than uh, 155. Okay, I see if k is equal to 0, and now I'm not adding any periods, so then I just get 60. Okay, so t, 60 does fall in this interval, so t can be 60. Okay, next up, let's make k equal to 1, then I get 420, so I'm adding 360 once. 420 is too big. Okay, it's not going to work. So 420 is too big for that. Next, so uh, for this one I've done the positive, let's go negative. If I subtract 360, I get negative 300. Negative 300 is too small, not going to work. So I've done everything I can. If I'm going to subtract more, of course I'm just going to get further away from the limit anyways. So I'm not going to do any more there. Now I'm going to this one start with k equal to 0 then I get 120 plus no 360s that's just 120 which we can see is less than 155 greater than negative 135 next I add 360 but that's not going to work because then I get 480 way too big okay how about subtracting 360 then I get negative 240 okay negative 240 uh, uh, but two too big so or too small actually so these are my only two solutions and that's my problem solved